really like to get near the bear food uh, as close as I can. And then we need a, a size, uh, an area specifically just about the size of your kitchen. Michael Proctor counts grizzlies using a technique that's drawing worldwide attention. He's part of a team of British Columbia scientists that track wildlife using DNA sampling. All right, off to the races. The revolution here is that we can get so much biological information out of this little clump of hair and that the bear really doesn't even know that he's been, uh, he's been studied or sampled. Proctor has lived and worked in BC's Kootenay region for 25 years. For him, this is about much more than just counting bears. If as a society we can keep grizzly bears across the landscape, then we can feel like that we have a reasonable facsimile of uh, the, the wilderness. Uh, so they're a little bit of a canary in the, in the, in the mine in that they're, they're, they're very sensitive. So if, if they're gone, then we can think, well, gee, what's next and, and what's next? Grizzlies are omnivorous. Despite their size and fearsome reputation, they get most of their calories from plants. Solitary creatures that have no natural enemies, the males usually roam huge territories. Females give birth to one or two cubs that live with her for up to a year. Grizzlies once roamed North America from Mexico to Alaska, but humans have changed all that. Today, their habitat is compressed to just southern BC and Alberta to the Arctic, with only isolated pockets remaining in the United States. In the hunting debate, each side claims widely different assessments of grizzly populations, as few as 4,000 to as many as 13,000. A huge discrepancy for an animal getting so much attention. But then again, it's not like the grizzly a loner with an attitude is all that cooperative. Black bears, you can usually just go in and work with a little closer and uh, it's not so risky, but with grizzly bears, it's, uh, you want to keep your distance. All right, here we go. Hey, don't be dragging that right beside the helicopter. <laughs> in an alpine meadow deep in the Purcell <laughs> Mountains of southeast British Columbia, biologist Michael Proctor and chopper pilot Ken Platts are about to build a turnstile designed for grizzlies. See some old sign of grizzly bear digging. Uh, they dig them up, turn them over and get the roots. And I think uh, we can probably just What's do it right here. right here. This is a you big, know, large stuff. alpine bowl. That's the end of a long valley with lots of good habitat in it. So it's a, sort of a, a, a good spot for a bear to uh, come in uh, midsummer. Uh, just like in real estate, Location is everything when you're counting bears. Get the right spot, and it's simply a matter of building a good fence. We're just spreading out about 75 feet of wire, uh, knee high. It's pretty low tech. Just about where a bear uh, comes up to it with his nose and has to make a decision. Well, do I go up or down? So then you're guaranteed to get the, the hair. The wire's up. Now a little nose candy for the big bear. We used uh, about uh, four or five month old rotted uh, cow blood we get from the uh, uh, slaughterhouses and butchers. And then um, we also rot down some fish. We put it in a barrel and let it rot down for uh, anywhere from two months to a year. And it is, uh, it's real serious. I gotta spread that <laughs> it's, it's bad. They pour the mixture over a mound of brush. If a grizzly misses that smell in the valley, he's already having serious trouble. The Purcell Mountains are, to me, they're uh, relatively important uh, geographically because they're at the southern edge of the grizzly bear distribution in North America. The leaves are pretty good. Put them in salad. Here, Proctor is in his element. 25 years ago, he made a lifestyle, not a career decision, and moved to the Kootenays. To stay, he's worked as a boat builder, piano teacher, tree planter, and in his 40s, decided to study ecology. Just as he was wrapping up a degree, a group of bear biologists from Revelstoke showed up with a new project requiring field work in the backcountry. And what they really wanted was sort of a wilderness savvy individual who can go out and 
you know, work alone and come back alive. So for the past seven years, he's been counting bears, working on a PhD, and becoming an expert in storing bottles of blood out of the reach of the big beasts. The miracle is, when you're flying around a helicopter and you're picking out these sites, the size of a small kitchen or, or, or a large bathroom, and we're putting one site every 25 to 60 square kilometers. So it's really like a needle in a haystack. 